Well, hi. Hey. <laughs> hey yo. So, so for those of you just tuning in, <laughs> which is all of you, which is everybody, <laughs> um, Katie Rubin and I were um, talking earlier. There has been, oh gosh, I don't even know where to start. I think I just want to start with like, there's just been this conversation that I can't get out of my world around the topic of um, Christianity, spirituality, religion. And um, I, I've actually been aware, like Katie, I've been aware of you during this whole conversation. Like even when I brought it up, I was like, I need to talk to Katie. Anyway, today it popped and we were messaging. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious like where this wants to go and what we can change and open up and talk about and stuff. Um, I know that like for me that the energies around um, my, what I called my relationship with my relationship with Jesus and my like worship, you know, around that and everything, those energies have always been so light for me and so expansive and so like nurturing and um, something that I invited into the world in a way that, you know, would make other people cry. Like there was just, there was something to that, that actually I got to see really in real life in an access class recently at Right Voice for You, where um, I got to sort of, I guess, get words for some of the things that I was aware of, you know, with just total presence and being and gratitude and all the, you know, when we talk about an access consciousness, like all the five elements of intimacy of gratitude and vulnerability and trust and allowance and honoring, like, I was like, you know, all of those energies are the ones that I've literally followed my whole life. And, you know, I followed them through my first religion that I was a part of that I just was born into. And then I followed them again when I got saved. And when I, you know, knew and then I followed him when I went to China to smuggle Bibles. And then I followed him when I went to Bible school. And like, there's just been this um, following going on. And, it, but it's been a following of energies. And so I, I don't even know what, where we want to start with this. Um, but I'm curious, like what your take on it, what you get out of it. Like, oh, yeah, I have ideas. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask you first, I'm just curious, what, what religion were you born into? It was a blender religion. It was called the I am activity. And from a Christian perspective, it was considered a cult. Um, oh, okay. We like, we, all kinds of beliefs. Like we were polytheistic and um, I, I was vegetarian and we didn't, I didn't eat pepper or listen to rock music or like we had all kinds of rules that went along with it. Yeah. Um, but essentially it was, it was actually all around energy. Well, it was, it was a couple of things. Like I find like religion in, in its essence is about doing right or like doing right as opposed to wrong. Right. But then it also combined this whole um, concept of energy, like positive and positive and negative energy. So we, it was right. still a lot of polarity, but I do remember like every year we would gather, there was, there was people in this thing all over the world. And every year we would gather at this place in Northern California at Mount Shasta and um, I remember being on the earth there and being at that place and it being different. You know, there was something yeah. different about being there and something different about the people when we were there. And so, it, you know, like anything, it had its bits that were really true and light and other things that were really retarded. Yeah. By the way, this conversation is brought to you by Coke Zero. <laughs> Coke Zero, the, the beverage of all religions. <laughs> we get later. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Thank you for sharing that. By the way, it's so cool because when you talk about the piece about the land, whatever land that was, it's like my I get uh, I'm just yeah. like my my heart. I can feel your heart on it and your your energy with it, and it's it's um it's gorgeous. Makes me want to cry. It made um, me want to cry being there. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, topic. I mean, every time we start to get to certain pieces of this topic, I'm like, yeah, oh, I just melt. I know. So I, um, uh, just to give a background of my thing, cause I'm already relating so many pieces of what you're saying to my own wacky wild journey, this particular lifetime, um, boy, where to start, but the, sh so just, like you said, where do I start? I know. So, I was born into the religion of atheism and empiricism and intellectualism and anti-religion. Um, but my mom is an Irish Catholic and was raised like Catholic school, Catholic school, Catholic school forever. Met my atheist scientist Jew dad, mm. got married, 
threw it all away for him and and as a form of rebellion against her family and to be the one who like she was like the first person in her family to go to college and to be able to use her brain and to be an empowered woman in the 50s which was like a big fat deal and they both are ceo people vp people like you know high functioning whatever and my when they got divorced uh when i was 18 my mom kind of like found her christian or her catholicism again she's she's Catholic, but I was raised in a house that was very cerebral, very anti anything. It was all stupid and dumb and beneath us. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those were the judgments of of my, my family. And then I had a whole series of traumas when I was very young, you know, um, sexual abuse with people I knew people I didn't know, um, recreating that trauma through dating toxic people, abusing alcohol, like bad, 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 lots and lots of drugs, all the drugs. Binge eating disorder, like serious, serious eating disorders, like 6,000 calorie binges several times a day. Started getting into recovery and through the 12-step programs, this was my sort of version of my young cult or my first religion, you know, was the 12-step programs and got so much out of the 12-step programs. The 12-step programs, for those people who maybe don't know, being built on the premise that you're powerless, you can't change your problem, but God can, or some higher power of your choosing, which was one thing I really liked about the 12 step programs. They're like, we don't care what God is for you or what higher power is. You could pray to the doorknob, just pray to something. They'd be like, they, we always had this joke, like pray to Natalie Portman. She's hot. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so like, really funny about that is like, I would go to um, AA meetings when I was younger because my mom went to them because not because we drank. We had no alcohol in our family. We had sexual abuse and every other abuse in our family, but no alcohol. But she went to AA meetings because she would go to Codependence Anonymous meetings and she thought they were a bunch of pussies. Yeah. So we would go to the yeah. AA. So that, that is actually where I got the first exposure to like a monotheistic um, higher power sort of thing. There you go. So from that, um, the long, long and short, short of it is that there came a point for me about seven years into the process where I, I really got that, like, I was like, all right, if this whole, there's a step in the 12 step program called the seventh step or the sixth and seven steps where you, you, you become willing to have God remove your defects of character. And I was like, I would ask around the meetings, like thousands of meetings. And by this time I was like a speaker and I was on the speaker circuit and people knew me and I was like a big 12 stepper. And I would ask people in meetings like, so how does a six and seven step work for you? Or like I'd ask my sponsor, like, how do you, does God remove your defects of character? And I would always get answers like, well, kind of, and not really. And you, you just choose it. You just be different or, and I'd be like, but if I could choose to be different, I would just choose it. But I always felt like this energetic block inside of my body that was like, I can't choose against this thing because it's, it's bigger than me. And it fucking was for a long time. Now, at the same time, I managed to be someone who's like a bit of a bulldozer. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. And um, so I just like created a life and like all these theater projects and I worked hard, to eat, but I had this like heaviness in the middle of my being. I used to call it the triangle of cement. Mm-hmm. And something in me knew. Now, this is where it gets really interesting to me. And this is where the, I think the, the crossover points that I keep talking about between consciousness work, tools of access, and spirituality kind of start to co collaborate is that the awareness I had, which I now would frame that way, is was that there was some way, I knew there must be a way to get some kind of lightness or energy into that cement and break it up. I just knew that. Mm. And I took for granted that like other people figured that that was the case too, which I've now come to understand like it doesn't occur to people a lot of the time. (laughs) I just knew. So I started to pray because I was big into praying and meditating at the time. I did transcendental meditation. I don't know if you're familiar with it for seven years, like religiously twice a day while doing a lot of Kundalini yoga at the same time, which I loved, but it was, my thing was like 20 minutes after I meditated, it was all fucked up again. I was like, well, yay, but what? So I started to pray and say, you got to help me melt this cement. Like, what's it going to take? I didn't, that wasn't the language then, but like, please fucking help me was the language. A school then fell into my lap, literally from the sky, 
Now, this, the story of that, I won't spend all this time talking about my story because I actually wrote my fourth solo show is the story of how I wound up at this school because it's a long series of events that were quite miraculous that just literally like a funnel of a river was like, and you're going here now, mm -hmm. including $50,000 that just fell out of the sky into my hands for free just out of fucking nowhere to, go, to pay right for the school. I was like, school, yes, money, go. How? That easy. Yeah. Now, the school was a Sufi school. And for those people listening who don't know, Sufism is the mystical arm of Islam. I had zero cognitive interest in Sufism. But when I heard the guy at the head of the room talking about how he was describing what he calls the layers of the heart and the realms of consciousness, mm -hmm. I knew what he was, I grokked him. Okay. I was like, I know these layers of the heart. I know what you're, you're talking about. I'm going to this school and it's going to heal the cement thing. I just fucking knew, you know? Mm -hmm. <sighs> so I went and I got the application. I filled it out. They accepted me and the money showed up and I went and it completely changed my life. Yeah. However, about two years into the school, I started to be like, boy, I don't like all these rules. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I was like this really, like, if you've ever met me, I say fuck a lot. And it's a part of my being. It's not like an anti anybody thing. It's just a it, fuck is the right word for me. <laughs> it's the word that applies. So. I was like this crazy creative bull in a really tight ass China shop. I did not fit in there with those people. I've never fit in anywhere as a lot of people can relate. Anybody accessy, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, and what I found was that, and then I'll stop talking with this, but I, I wanted to just give this context a little bit. What I found in that work was that the prayer cycles that, that we do there in the Sufi way really nourish me. They, and they do right now. I did it today because I was like, fuck it, I'm doing it. And it feels fucking good to me. It's like a, it's like a warm blanket on the inside of my being. Because mm -hmm. I can be very like, I do lots of stuff and I run around. And then I'd like a, like a nice little warm blanket inside of me. And I get that from the Sufi prayers. However, what I was not getting was like any energy or impetus to create anything. In fact, the deeper I went on the path, and I, I ended up spending six or seven years deep on this path, like on a mountain in St. Helena, out of the world, I like renounced the world, not entirely because I had to work to make money, but like pretty much was like done with this planet and was like, okay, I'm just, it's me and God and that's what I do and we'll see what that does. And after a while, the truth for me is I got broke and bored. I was like, I didn't have any money. And I was like, okay, I'm really spiritual and I've transcended all time and space. And um, <laughs> no. I, mean, I literally had no attachment to anything. I was like, well, I don't need a boyfriend and I don't need money and I don't care about anything and I can be chubby now and it's fine. And I was bored. So I started to ask a new question. Hmm. And I was like, well, how am I going to feel? This was the question at the time. What, how am I going to feel excited about being alive again? Because mm. right now I feel very peaceful. I was so fucking peaceful. I, man, was I peaceful. And I said, what's going to take for me to feel excited again? I didn't frame it literally like that. And literally, right after I started asking, Blossom Benedict showed up in my Facebook feed. Now, she was not on Facebook for years. And then one day she was suddenly there talking about pod and pock, whatever. And I was like, oh, and we had taught together like 10 years prior, the Bay Area. Blossom and I taught acting together years ago. So I was like, what's this wacky stuff Blossom's doing? And I sat on a beach in Orange County and pot and pock some shit for two hours and got up and my business quadrupled. Like the clients I was seeing were all Sufi clients, healing clients. Uh, and I literally got up from that beach after clear, using the clearing statement a bunch, and all of a sudden I had twice as many clients. I didn't do a single thing different. So ever since then, um, I've just been really looking at, okay, what is the, if this is spirituality and this is consciousness, like what is this place right here in the middle where they meet, and why is it or how is it that they feel so different energetically there is a different energetic for me 
but, and they do different things for me, but some of the things they do are the same. Mm-hmm. I know that, that everything is one thing and they, boy, do they feel not like one thing sometimes. Well, I think one of the things I'm getting as you're talking is, is this whole thing of like consciousness includes everything and judges nothing, like is the first thing. Like, so how, th- what I'm wondering as you're talking, because I mean, it's similar, different and similar uh, for me, you know, like I, be- I mean, for the last three years, really, I would not call myself a Christian, you know, like I wouldn't say, I would be like, you know, somebody would ask me if I was a Christian, I would say no. And even now today, I don't know what I would say. Cause I don't know if I define myself that way. I don't know if it's real. So, so there's still that going on for me. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot, uh, my, li- I, my life was saved by Jesus. Like yeah. my life was saved by that. Like I looked mm. back on my teens, like, um, 17 and 18 around the time I got saved. And I, did, I mean, I always joked that I did my best sinning between 17 and 25 because it was after I got saved that I discovered sex and boys and rock and roll, you know, um, which was actually horrendous. Like it was actually a terrible, like it wasn't even a fun journey, some of it, but mm-hmm. I am. Um, and there was a lot of shame and feeling bad. However, there was these moments where I would turn on the worship music and I would be alone with God. And I knew that my Abba Father had my back. Mm. And I did not have that anywhere else in my life. I didn't have anybody else that had my back like that. Mm -mm. And that was what, I, I, that's why I'm here. You know, that was one of the things that got me here. And um, for me, like between 18 and 25, I mean, there was a whole bunch of things. I raised money to go to China for three months and I smuggled Bibles and I like, you know, 30 teenagers followed me around the dark of China, track bombing things. And, you know, I did things that matched that energy at the time. And, um, and at 25 was just like, ah, there's gotta be something else. Like I can't just, I was working a desk job. I like finally had some stable legs under me in the sense that I had a normal job and a normal apartment and, and I'm sitting at my desk and my normal job with my normal apartment and a normal guy in my life like going is this it right this fucking can't be all there is to my life which is when the little boutique bible school fell into my lap you know I was like I have to go to that um so you know that so we had 30 students there I, I laugh about that sometimes because I think um those of us who went sort of feel um in and amongst ourselves sort of normal. There was 30 of it, but I'm like, no, no. Like we could have gone to this massive other school that was there in Oklahoma, but we chose this little tiny school down in, in Huntsville, Alabama, that was teaching a facet of Christianity. Nobody else was teaching um, because it was different. So chose that and did that. And then I probably spent the next 10 or 11. I mean, I was in and out of two marriages after that. So I did a lot of questioning and a lot of struggling it's a different journey, but, but what I'm getting, like, since this, like, it's probably been the last three months that these energies have reemerged in my life, and I can't even yeah. remember. Oh, I know what triggered it. was a conversation with Blossom. Blossom. Yeah. Catalyst. Oh, that Blossom. That Blossom. Catalyzing shit all over the goddamn place. Um, but I, we, you know, we started talking, actually started talking with Ron, her husband, and we, when we got into the topic of Christianity, my whole world light, lit up, you know, and <laughs> Blossom's just sitting there watching me like light up and she's like, yeah, you should really do an internet marketing business. <laughs> like, what are you, what are you doing? And I, and I, that's when I started really relooking at this. And, and so to bring it circle back around to what you were saying is, is the crossover is one of the things that I've noticed in the last three months that definitely crosses over is the space of being and presence that we're invited to in some of these different classes. Like, and man, that's the stuff that doesn't have any pock and pod with it. Like it's just being like it's, and I I remember I first saw it when I, when I went to the, my first energetic synthesis of being with Dane, um, every fucking five minutes I was bawling. Cause like I saw what I saw it. I saw that presence. I saw what I knew back when I was 25 in Bible school, I saw what I experienced when I was on the floor in front of my, you know, speakers worshiping God. Like I, I, it was there. That was the same energy. And, and then it would weave in and out of different class. I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't perceive it as much in classes with Gary or whatever, you know, like it was, there's definitely different energies there. Um, But then I just went, I just came back from right voice in Paris and I was like this, like all of these energies here too are the same energies. And I, and that's, what's got me wondering about all of it. And 
I guess just really more the question of like what kind of like what have we always been aware is true and yeah. what what did we come here to be that's different you know that whole question of like yeah. that being thing that goes beyond cognition it's like you can't even fucking you you know you can use words to explain all in and around it and you can sort of joke about it and but being like you know yeah and um you know yeah no yeah i don't want to cut you off mid-thought but it's kind of, I lost, you know, and that's where I get to with all of it with, that's where I get to with all of it is like, I kind of run out of words and it's like, I have two things. Mm. One, one thing is a question for you because I want to hear your experience with this. And another thing is a story about a conversation I had with Gary at the S at the blah, 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 two, three in some place in Southern California. <laughs> at some time. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so. Well, the first thing, okay, I guess I want to tell the Gary story first, and then I want to ask you a question about, about this for you. So I'm in this class, and it was like, it was my first class with Gary. Is that true? Probably. I don't know. I think it was my first class with Gary. And I was so excited to meet him at that time and to just, like, have the opportunity to be at the mic with him and ask him all the stuff I was wondering. And mm-hmm. I think the first question I asked him, or maybe the second, was it was like, hi, Gary. And he was like, wow, Blossoms told me about you. You're very pretty. <laughs> and I was like flattered as hell and was like what uh, <laughs> thanks man okay huh so I'm already like what I left your game <laughs> <laughs> I loved it too and I like didn't feel pretty at the moment either I was just yeah. sort of like frumpily showing up to this weird access anyway he knew what to say to me to open my heart kind of and so I said I was like, okay, so Gary, help me out because I've been playing with these tools for a few months now or whatever it was. And I said, is God inside of consciousness or is consciousness inside of God? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so you're saying that it's all one thing. And he said, yes. And I said, and so you're saying everything is, is that? And he was like, yeah. And I go, and you're also saying that nothing is that right? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And then I said, so <clears throat> why do we, why does none of the material that you're presenting, all these books we get when we come to class, none of it is talking about God? Like, w- w- I've heard you vaguely reference when people are vortexing that they're, they're with the Godhead. He'll say something kind of like God's source, and it's kind of like hidden in the books, and it's not looked at closely. And I was like, so why aren't we just talking openly about how these things meet each other? And he just very sincerely barriers down, said in front of everybody, he's like, honestly, I just don't want this thing, meaning like these classes I'm teaching and this business I do, I don't want this to be a thing about that because that's, that's a whole other thing I don't want to get into because it's, it's hard for people. Not everybody's as able to hear things as you are about this God conversation. You say the word God and everybody goes insane because it means a thousand things to a thousand people. Now, after I was like, okay, I, okay. And I was like dealing with that. Now, after that conversation, this was on the mic in front of everyone. My buddy, Jason Rabino said to me, I have to tell you, he has never, I have been in a thousand classes with him or however many. He's like, he's never spoken that way to anyone about when they ask about God, he makes a joke or he makes a dick joke or he just like blows them off or makes them feel stupid or he doesn't go there with people about it. And what I got in that moment was that, I mean, Gary, as we know, is a super crazy aware dude. And I, I think, I mean, what I get is that Gary could perceive the space from which I was operating with the God thing. And he knew I could hear him because I wasn't coming from like, God as a father or God as a right, wrong taskmaster. Mm-hmm. I was like, I've been on a mountain for six years with this God thing. And some of the stuff you're talking about is very similar. Why are we not talking about that? And he was like, people can't hear it. So all this time later now for me, I'm like, oh, okay, so I've been tripping. I, probably more than the average person because I'm such a head tripper, as you know. But I've been tripping on like... <sighs> if access isn't teaching it and, and I know, okay, so spiritual people will say to me, Oh, that Gary Douglas, he's 
a lizard person. He's a bad guy. He's toxic. Access is all about money and sex and fucking your neighbor and stuff. And then access was like, yeah, we don't do spirituality. And if you chant God chants, you'll bring entities in. And I've been like, what the fuck? Everybody's doing this, which is the antithesis of what both of you are teaching. You're all teaching. It's about oneness and it's, everything is one unity, love, peace. Blah. Now, but you're both going, no, we're right. No, we're right. And it's really, I, I keep coming back to like, it kind of seems to me that it's about marketing. I mean, in other words, like if we're talking about a business that a person is running, access consciousness is a business is as well as a system of tools that changes your life. And I fucking love the tools and I'll use them and then they're fucking amazing. And it's a business. And he's like, I'm not here. I'm not in the God business. Yeah, it very well could be. And I am, I mean, like, I've gotten to spend quite a bit of time with Gary and Dane and, you know, and so like, the, the thing, if for me, is, again, this kind of circles back around to what I was saying before. It's like, what I've noticed is, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, Gary will say, there's five things. I got so much going on. Yeah. Gary will say anything to bring up as much judgment in the room as he possibly can to then clear it. Mm. He will do and say whatever it takes to whoever's on the microphone to create an energy that he can then change and shift or, or wedge that person's world to get them to choose something more. Mm. Um, the being he is, is one yeah. of the, the kindest, most generous hearted beings I've ever met. Me too. But that doesn't really, you don't get to it's not that you don't get to see a lot of that in classes, but it is different. Like spending time with him one-on-one -on -one is incredibly different than him as a facilitator. Mm. But that's one piece. And when I saw that, when I got to perceive that, because for a long time I could perceive Dane, but I couldn't perceive Gary. I was like, Gary's kind of this kind of an asshole. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I just, I went to more classes and I got to spend more time and I'm like, Oh my God, like there's so much kindness and allowance in his world. Like I, I've never, so that matched the energy, you know, all of these energies yep. I'm aware of that have always, that have, that brought me here, you know, I'm yep. like that, those are they, you know? Yep. And then, yeah, it is a business. So you mean, Gary talks all the time about like, what can people hear? What can people right. hear? What can people hear? You know, right. I really do. I mean, even as I've started talking about this topic of religion and Christianity, like I'm so aware of the, gigantic amount of right and wrong and judgment that goes on in this area. I mean, it, yeah. you know, whether you're talking about spiritual, Sufi, metaphysical, religious, whoever you're talking about, there, there are so many people who take polarized points of view in this er arena. Yeah. So it's, um, so I don't know if yeah. I have a point of view about the marketing of it or not. I'm really aware. Well, that, and yeah. but the thing that I'm looking at is like, I can't shut up about it right now. So is now the time, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, okay, yeah. To trust myself now after three years of using these tools i'm like yeah. i trust my own mouth my own mouth won't shut up about this yeah. shit right so maybe well, i mean what i mean when i say it's about marketing is not to say that like it's some skeezy manipulative crazy yeah. thing he's doing. i mean it more like he's been aware that this is totally. not a thing people could hear in this context totally so he's not going to market his business around he's not going to make classes around like let's talk about god because yeah, that's yeah. not going to get people in the door well I even are looking for yeah and even two years ago like I was having a conversation with Danielle Carter and she was raised a uh, Mormon mm. and she had no idea my religious background like and my religion's background spans like so many things you know and she's like oh you should do a telecall or she's something like you shouldn't do a telecall on religion don't do that and at the time I was like I guess I do know something about this but I it wasn't time but I had emailed Gary and I was like hey is it time for a telecall about religion and he never answered which when mm. Gary doesn't answer you is very indicative of something like he, when he doesn't, what he doesn't say is as potent as what he chooses to say. And, um, and what I got, I was looking at that today and I was like, it wasn't time. So what I'm curious about is like, what with everything that's going on in the world right now, like what conversation now is the world ready to have in a way that they just haven't been ready to have it before. Okay. Now, this is some juicy shit. This is where I get fucking excited. Everybody around me, I live in the Bay Area, right? And the Bay Area is liberal, central, yeah. crazy, liberal, but like polarizing liberality. Yeah. Like we're right about the liberalness. I you know. know. You know. And I'm like, uh, okay, Vancouver, guys. Vancouver, same, same thing. Yeah. So, so, okay. So 
somebody posted this thing recently, one of my spiritual psychic kind of hippie friends who I adore. She posted a thing that said it was some woman who channels ISIS or whoever the hell she channels. And it was like, it was this sort of treatise on the idea that, okay, this was her point of view. And I'm just going to share this point of view because I think it contributes to what you exactly just asked. She said, this is the time you, you've elected what I'm going to call a moy, a man boy. Okay. This is not a man. This is not an integrated being who's thought deeply about shit and has healed his heart and whatever words you want to use. This is a, this is a child mm -hmm. monster person. Now look at Russia and look at, I can't remember the other country. She's like the big leaders in the world right now are all mm -hmm. moys. Oh, they are. They're all moist. They're all insane. And she said, you got to get what's happening now is the darkness. Okay. I'm just going to use this language. Yeah, it's coming to the surface. Oh, but like the universe is basically like, okay, you guys are so stupid. You can't see shit here, here. Let's yell it at you. Here's what it looks like when you're a douchebag to people. Like <laughs> the universe is like, okay, you want a murderous, you know, racist asshole in charge. Go, here you go. So now the, so, and of course, like the spiritual people take the point of view of like, okay, well, if the darkness is up, it's our time to be light workers. And it's our time to, it's like, here, let's, okay. And I have to say, I, for me, thank you, Coke Zero. For me, this whole thing has me like creating more classes. Me too having this conversation with you yes. being more of a loud uh, fucking aggressive motherfucker about like, like the video I posted today that had us chatting, which was like, okay, guys, listen, look around. Is now the time for you to get over your shit about, I'm afraid to speak in public because people might judge me. Really? You're going to stop. Trump is the president. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time. Like, when are we going to really, you're going like, to, you're going to stay under your comfortable rock because you have feelings that are sensitive. Get up your ass. Like, anyway, yep. that's how I feel about it. And I know that's that how I feel about it. Everything I'm creating has that energy too. In fact, I've got one thing I'm creating right now that doesn't have that energy. And I'm like, that's on the chopping block. Cause I'm like, mm. this is now, I'm, that's what I'm getting. I'm looking around at everything that I want to put out in the world and everything is this invitation to like, let's go. Yeah. Let's be unstoppable. Let's speak. Let's, you yeah. know something. You know yeah. something. And I don't know if you know the words to it yet, but just open your fucking mouth and let it fall out. And that's this whole topic about around this, why this, we're having this conversation. Because I was like, all right, I'll talk. I came out back from Right Voice in Paris and I'm like, but I don't know what to say. Well, fuck it. I'm turning on Facebook Live and I'm opening my gob. Like, let's see what falls out. And, yeah. you know, and I get there's like, and I, one of the things I looked at today was like, it's been up to this point, the things that I care about the most that I've kept the most quiet. And I'm just like, how many of us are there that have been doing that? Like the thing that I, that I, that yeah. does the most, that I nurtures me and, you know, I keep quiet and I'm like, what if I didn't do that anymore? Yep. What if those of us that did know that was vulnerable information? Cause my, what I know about Christianity flies in the face of everything, the Pope, the Catholic church, the, every mm -hmm. church that I was ever a part of, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So, you know, that's 2.5 or give or take a billion people yeah. um, in the whole world that, you know, so, so, yeah. Anyway, so but yeah. go ahead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is that, so like it takes me to when I went to, um, I went to the, the three day body class with Shannon mm -hmm. O'Hara in uh, India a year ago. Oh, and I'm yeah, going back. That. Oh, that's yeah, I'm going to talk it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh my God. Right. Totally. And I got, Oh, and that's a cool thing on this topic. We'll come back to that. But in the class, she said to me, I was like, I, I asked her something about, I get caught a lot on my whole thing of like, I do 97 businesses. Which one is the one to focus on? Cause like I do get pulled in directions where I'm like, this is clearly just me jerking my own chain. What the fuck? <laughs> I do that too. You know? And, uh, and I was like, what am I supposed to do and focus on Shannon? And I don't know how I asked it or whatever, but what she said to me was, she was like, okay, let me ask you something. Are you, are you committed to being a force for, like, she goes, what are you really here to do? 
Mm. Are you here to contribute conscious to consciousness to people having more of it? I go, yeah. She goes, is that the thing you always knew even when you were six in your bedroom? Like, I was like, yeah. Were you at home going, I want to be an actor? I was like, no. I was at home when I was five or six going, I literally, this is a thought I had when I was in my bedroom at eight years old. I want to get at a podium in my brain. I said this, when I was laying on the ground, looking at, I had glow in the dark stars on the ceiling and I had black, it was black in my room. And I was looking at the thing and I was like, I want to get at a podium in front of thousands of people and talk about unity. Wow. In particular unity, because I had this awareness that like all things are one thing. And when we're creating separation, that's the whole problem. That's the only problem. And it's the whole problem. Right. So she said that to me and I got that like this whole like, if I'm going to make theater, I've always had this awareness. Like I've written five solo shows now and all this stand-up comedy. And it's always been about transformation, consciousness, healing, unity, all things are one thing. Every fucking play I write ends with a poem about all things are one thing and stop judging yourself and judging other people. And, and, and so I've been doing it but there's still a way that I'm not 100% committed to it. Like I'm, I'm really getting now that this fucking, I'm like, thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, motherfucker. Yeah. You know yeah. why? Because now I get, no, really, this is what I'm up to. Yeah. Because what else matters? Like what else are we, what else are we doing? I don't know what else, I don't know what else I'm doing. What else are we doing? Anyway, so. And then the other ten tangent, what we were talking about when you and I first started talking mm -hmm. was when I was in India and I get to India and I'm sitting in this hotel room and I've flown for 35 hours. I'm exhausted. All of a sudden I'm sobbing in the bed in India, sobbing. And I texted you. I don't even know why. I was like, I so crap and I'm sobbing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my jet. I think I'm jet lagged or I miss my mom or some shit. I don't know what I fucking said. And you were like, yeah, is it that or something else? And I was like, huh. It's something else. And then, and what I got in that instant when you asked me that, now this is some woo woo out there shit, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because this is what's true for me. The country of India, for me, is an energetic healer. And I got this when you asked me that question. There, there is like spiritual, like lineage, history, spiritual shit in that land that just literally was pulling everything that wasn't me up and out of my body to be sobbed out. Yeah. And you helped me like get to where I could just sob for a while. Half an hour later, I was like, I was on a high for the entire nine days I was in India. I just floated through India with no problems and no sickness. And I was blissed out and I, I would walk into temples and they'd be like, come in and pray with us. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and we, I was like praying <laughs> with the Danists and the Hindus. And I found a Christian church. I, I was just in temple after temple. Mm -hmm. And that's really where I was starting to be like, okay, I'm not going to pretend that these consciousness tools are separate from God somehow. Cause come on. They're not, they're not, that's it. They're just not. And I don't know, I don't know how this all plays together. The one thing that I know, the one maybe out of five things that I know is that I came here to create a planet that's kinder, free of judgment and is all the energies that I'm aware of when we talk about total gratitude and total vulnerability, like all those words, like I'm here to create a planet that has all of that more being more presence more willingness to to be that with each other and i mean i see it in in access classes when i go to sops and i see it in access classes when i go to right voice for you and i've seen it a lot of other places too like when there's no judgment and there's no separation and there's no any of that like that that is that is what it is yeah, yeah. and i don't know if i started out my life wanting to create that or if I just knew I but I always was gravit I always gravitated towards something that's that's something greater thing like there's got to be something greater there's something yeah. more like you know serving getting stuff out into the world that would give people choice and um giving you know I mean growing up being bullied and made fun of you know like I had this thing in my world where like nobody gets nobody gets mistreated you know and growing up with abuse like no that is not happening on my watch like so it's, it's also interesting to me to look at, and I get there's a lot of us like this, where I, looking at my life landscape, going, man, I experienced abuse, bullying, you know, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and then in my marriages, like affairs and 
divorces and like all this stuff that got me here has me like in the world now going, I get you. There is nothing wrong with you and you can do anything you want to do and choose and create. Mm. I feel like Crystal, that right there is the whole, and you guys touched on this when you, in your conversation that I was texting you about earlier today, you had a conversation that you guys, if you're watching this, check out Crystal's wall uh, on Facebook. There's a conversation with she and three of her old Christian friends. I don't know what to say. Yeah, we all went to Bible school together. Yeah. And you guys touched on it a lot in that the piece that seems to be the kind of, I don't know if I want to say like the fulcrum at the wheel of all these spokes that touch into this one place, which is, which is choice and empowerment. In Mm -hmm. other words, like that was the piece that I was like, boy, these Sufi people, these particular ones, not all Sufi people, but the ones I was studying with really want me to be disempowered to this God thing. Yeah. And I don't get that God wants that. Like I had a very direct connection with it and it liked me a lot how I am. (laughs) Meanwhile, the leaders of the fucking school were like, everything about you is wrong. Yeah. But pray more and you'll be loved. And I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Same, Come on. same for me. Like when I started questioning this whole, like the thing that started unraveling things for me was I started, I read a book called the sins of scripture and I don't know what it said, but I started looking at this whole, um, uh, confess your sins to the Lord and you will be saved. And once you're saved, then you're in the club. <laughs> it doesn't say that right. in the Bible, but <laughs> right. that's the gist, right? right. Like, this entrance right. into the club, it's you say these words and you confess your sins and you do, do, you say this stuff that you believe on Jesus Christ and then you're in the mm. club. And if you're not in the club, you're going to hell. And if you are, in the, and I was, I started looking at that. And one of one of the biggest gifts that my pastor from Impact International School of Ministries, Jim Richards, if he ever watches this, I fucking adore you, um, gave me was like, he's you want to c- always compare everything that you read in the Bible to the character of God, to the nature of God, to who basically the, the essence, the energy of who God is. You never use those words, but that, but I got that. It was yeah. so resonant through my entire system. Mm. And I started looking at this fact that all of Christianity is built around. And I was like, that does not match. Mm-hmm. Does not fucking match. Right. And that one thing he gave me empowered me to start asking. And, and that's what started unraveling the right and the wrongness of all of it. And then I did end up dumping the essence of it out too. And then now that's back. So I'm grateful for that. I'm so right there with you. I dumped it too. I was like, I'm into consciousness and empowerment. And I'm a big I'm like so white. black and white. I'm like, baby, you're bathwater, bitches. That's it. Like, you know, you can't have both. And now I'm yeah. like, that's not actually true. I know. And you know what's funny is there's, there's been a lot of people I've chatted with just casually in access classes about this. And they'll be like, they'll just look at me like, why do you have to make it two things? Yeah. And I'm like... But meanwhile, Gary's at the front of the room saying words to trigger us. So I'm like, but Gary said, and disempowering my awareness to every fucking buddy. Anyway, and then, and now it's like all coming around to where is whatever. It's all well, coming around. Like if, it, like if anybody could get anything out of this conversation, it's like, yeah, you and I, we both have our, like everybody's got a different experience. And it's like, but everything we chose got us here, number one. So what a fucking gift. And number two, we fucking knew something and we still know something. And that yeah. something has 2,500 facets to it. Right. And three, like, what do you know? What do you know? What do you know that's different than what anybody else knows that may be different than what anybody else has voiced? Like, that's what I love about this mm. conversation is like, we're voicing shit. Maybe we might be the first. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we're yeah. one of five around the planet, but the more of us that start speaking what we know, the words to what we know, like the more possibilities will be available to everybody. Like consciousness yeah. includes everything and judges nothing. Includes yeah. everything. So this doesn't even matter where this goes for us. Like for me, I don't even have a yeah. point of view for myself if I ever go to church again or if I ever sing another worship song. Like yeah. I'm just going to keep following. Do you know what I mean? Like this yeah. isn't even that conversation. This no. is like something different of like, yeah. Because is, this is what the question that keeps coming to my mind, too, is like, is now the time for people to understand that there isn't even separation between you and God, which is to say, even your ego, your big, bad, evil ego personality oh self. What if God, you, guess what? I always used to be like this in 12 step. I'd be like, if everything about my ego is so wrong and bad, why did I come here with it? And if God is the creator of all things, why did it make me all fucked up, wrong and bad? Why so did I, he make me a bad person to begin with? Why couldn't he just make me good? Well, also, I didn't buy the idea that, like, 
it would have to be that complicated that like he'd it make you all really fucked complicated. up. Make you all fucked up so you could find him and then <laughs> realize his son to die for you so that you could be better again. How about what? How about that's all a bunch of hooey and we listen to Jesus in the first place, who was just like a cool, groovy, hippie, public fucking speaker. chaos mage of magnitude. Yeah, is that us? Hung out with all the outcasts because the outcasts fucking knew something different. Was right, and the this is the piece too is like the potency thing of like somehow we all in this religion shit where it was all about disempowering people so a couple white dudes could be in charge of everything. Yeah, it's like. We all disempowered ourselves. So what if we're supposed to be loudmouth, badass bitches who have hearts of gold, who are here to like bulldoze through the bullshit with the light of love in our hearts? Like they're not two different things. And this is for me to hear myself say, Diet Coke says hello. This is for me to hear myself. Coke Zero says hello. This is a panda bear. Where is he? There he is. Pow. Um, but is that it's like I have had this separation point and the Sufis, I mean, I get now why I was there. I was there to get so agitated with the wrong, with how they were making me wrong for being strong and vocal and saying fuck when I, by the way, I had, was the only student in my class who built a successful Sufi healing business. It was a healing school to make you a healer. And guess who was the one who made cash? The loudmouth, crazy, <laughs> fuck wielding one. <laughs> Nobody else. What was I doing? I was out changing the world with these fucking sessions, like seeing six people a week, which was like a big fucking. Everybody's like, How are you seeing six people? And I was like, I'm doing exactly what they told us to do. I pray to God. This is true. I would pray to God and ask for clients and the phone would fucking ring. I don't know where they fucking came from. People would tell people, I don't know what, I don't know how it happened. No Facebook. It would just fucking happen. And that's miracle shit. But they were teaching us miracles. But see, people, people don't want to believe in miracles. Even people at a miracle school don't want to believe miracles. And that's this whole thing of like asking. So it's the same shit. We talk about an access consciousness. We just use different words for it. It's the same yeah. shit, like ask and you shall receive. We use the same fucking words in Christianity. Man, I went to China as a 22-year-old with 30 teenagers at my back. Like I was the leader. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And there were so many moments, I can't even tell you how many moments, where I didn't know how I was going to get out of the situation, what I was going to do. And man, the universe had my back. God had my back. God had my back. God had my back. I didn't even, I went on this, I was supposed to raise $5,000. I didn't know how to raise money. I did. I raised like 3,500 of it. And there was two legs to this trip where one leg, you go to Texas and you get trained for two weeks in this drama thing and thing and thing. And then you fly from Texas to your destination. So I went to Texas $1,500 short of the 5,000 I needed to go to the next leg of my trip. So I was essentially going to fly to Texas and fly home. But I knew when I got on that plane, I fucking knew that I was going to China and I did not know how. So I get to Texas and some guy, I'm talking to people just about my story and what, and some guy had put a blank check in his wallet for somebody. He didn't know who. And I started talking to him about this. He's like, I put this blank check in my wallet and it's for you. And here's your $1,500 and you can go to China. But I'm talking like that's just one example of over and over and over of just daring and risking that I know something that somebody's going to take care of me and it shows up. Yeah. And so it's now with access tools that I get that I have, I've got the power, you know, like I've got that power. I didn't learn that piece, you know, I, but it's not a far stretch from everything that did work for me then. So now it's like, oh no, I can actually ask for everything that I'd like to have, every single mm. thing that I'd like to have in my life. That's how this works, mm. you know? And it's like, I got pieces of it through the guy got, like I got just enough to get me here. And now it's like, that's, 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 I don't even have any more words after that, but that's mm. what, what it is, you know? So there's no, it's all the same. A rose by any other name smells as sweet. And yes, words have energy and like, yeah. Like, I get that. And yeah, yeah, I know. There's those times when like energy transcends the fucking words and it just is what it is. Yeah. So, How does that. it get better than Wait, that? You could just keep talking like for the next five hours. You could have a five hour hangout. I think so too. Um, yeah, this may be a good pausing place just in the sense that people yeah. listening, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually curious and I'd love to sort of say to people listening, like, 
what are your thoughts about this? What questions do you have? And what conversations would you like to have about this? And, and you know, again, is now the time for us all to be looking at what, it, what, what, oh, and this brings me back, perfectly back to that question I forgot to ask you that I was going to ask you, but I kind of get it now, but still, is like for everybody, is like, what spark in your heart do you, have you always had yeah. that you've tasted in many different places that everyone out there has told you is a different spark. Yeah. And this is the place where the real spark is, but you had the spark in you the whole time, Dorothy, as you click your heels together, <laughs> um, you know, and what does that bring up for everybody listening? And what, what do you, like you've said, what do you know? What is, what is that what light in your being has have you always had or known or listened to or knew you could listen to if you would give yourself permission? Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the question I was going to ask you is like, I, I'm curious to know like how the heart plays a role in this for you because that is the thing we don't talk about in access very much yet or right now, or we haven't a lot, or at least I haven't heard it a lot mm -hmm. is, and I had a conversation with um, Susan Lazar Hart a little bit about this in right relationship for you. We talked about, we don't talk about this in Access a lot, but she was very open about talking about the, the heart and its role in decision making and perceiving light and heavy and perceiving what's real and what's not and what's a lie and so on. And, and, and that is a piece that I would like to bring up in, in this conversation and, and we can either do it now or another time, but like, I'm definitely re-remembering that for myself, a lot of the... I guess I'm going to come back to the words, the crossover points. Mm. I find them in my heart. Mm. I don't find them in my brain for sure. I never find anything They're much cognitive, no. useful there. Yeah. But I also don't find them all the time out here, like just out here. I, I sometimes I do in the state of being that we talk about, like there's like a being, like you've been saying there's being and it's sort of everywhere. Well, but to like, just interrupt you, like when I talk about that, like I, it's in my body. Like when I'm being me, like I would say, I would probably say I'm right here. Like I'm being all of me from here, you know? So mm. like even in right voice, when we play with getting up on the stage and like being totally present in whatever it is we're singing and fuck the voice, however that sounds like the energy goes down from my heart into the ground in through my feet, up through my head, down through, you know, like it, it yep. really does start here. So I don't, I've never had a conversation about that, but like every time I am fully being, it's like, boom, you know, mm. from here. Well, so. I love hearing that because, because uh, I had the kind of childhood and the kind of upbringing where everything I've been taught, you know, that I've cleared and changed through all different systems and healing modalities has been sort of like, if I could oversimplify it, it's, it is a journey from the head to the heart. And mm. you now it's, it goes beyond the heart as well, but it, but, but the heart, the heart, I can't, for me, I can't taste the light of God the way I found it without engaging my heart center. Mm -hmm. I can't really be vulnerable or intimate with people if I don't let every wall that's, for me, the walls go right here. And if I let those down, let my barriers down, it's always that place that softens mm -hmm. for, for me because I, I, had, I just had so much training and had to wall that shit up and be a brick wall right here that like, that and so I don't know, there's something important to me about adding that word into the into the conversation. Cool. <clears throat> and, you know? I mean, I do know that there is um Jim Richards, the the pastor at Impact, actually did a he has a whole program called Heart Physics. And he did a um a whole um study on the heart as an organ. And mm -hmm. even in Chinese medicine, um there's I'm going to butcher this. This is, don't take this as fact, go Google this shit. But I do know that there's a lot, there's been a lot of research done on the organ itself that it actually has memory, yeah. but it's got different kinds of memory than the cognitive like car catalog card system that our brain is. And, um, and all kinds of other things that the actual organ itself does function yeah. different. Yeah. And his discovery was that when, the way he talked about it and I really get the gift of this and now is that he would commune with God in his heart instead of communing with the words cognitively he would actually and when I look at the energy of that that is the energy of what we're talking about 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I feel like it's an important piece to look at just for people who might be listening, who might be wondering like, where, where does this energy that you and I are, are articulating our awarenesses of live or how do I access it? It's like, I, I wonder what would happen if you went into your heart. And, you know, where I start a lot with people when I do access sessions with people is I, I have people, this is just how I do it. I have people get really present in their body and describe to me where their limiting point of view is resonating in their body as an energy. And then we, we break that up with the tools and then they feel lighter actually in their body. And a large percent of the time, you know, people have stuff in their throat or their belly or their heart, right? Or their head or wherever it is. But I start the, the expansion exercise at the heart just because it's not to make the heart the answer or whatever, but it is a pretty potent portal through which um, vulnerability arises for, for me anyway. And, and so what I know is that if we're going to get through anything, if you, you know, you're showing up for an access session, you're looking to get through something. If we're going to get through anything, if it's, if the heart isn't involved at all, it kind of doesn't, it kind of often doesn't stick or really change. There's this. And when I say the heart also, I'm not talking about romantic love or the organ even I'm talking about the center of the chest Mm. I'm talking about right here and I don't know really what I'm talking about except that I follow energy just like you're saying yeah cool and I would just invite everybody who's listening to this to look at what's true for you and look at like I know for me like I cut off my body completely for a long long time so this awareness that I have of my body and of that energy in my body and where it is is pretty I'd say new within the last six months to a year so also if you're listening to this and you're like I have a body (laughs) you know (laughs) you know just just be aware that you do and this may not you may not know what we're talking about but yeah um yeah yeah well that's the the great gift I think about when you start to really do energy work is that it kind of forces one to be with one's body at a certain point because there comes a point at which you can't circumnavigate your body anymore and you come to discover that the answers are not in your head and they're not outside of you. They're here in this body and you have this fucking body. Like we didn't incarnate for accidentally or like, cause it was a mistake. Like there's something to be learned from this thing. This vessel is here for a reason. Yeah. Which I didn't get literally probably <clears throat> till six or eight months ago after f- five body classes, three advanced body classes and 20 other access classes. It took me that long to have any appreciation for my body. And even I can hear as you're talking, me going, uh huh. There's still a lot of stuff there where, I, like, I was so cut off from my body that I'm still like. I remember actually having conversations. This is we're like transitioning now, but having right. a bunch of conversations with um, Heather Nichols when I first started Access, and she would talk about like, you know, we we talk about an Access consciousness all the time about perceiving the energy of your life and what you want to create and all this stuff. And I like could not. And actually, this is interesting because I get this ties into what we were talking about before. But I could not. I didn't know what that meant. And I, and I, we were sitting in a hot tub once and I'm like, I don't get the relevance of my body. <laughs> that, and she, she looked at me like, <laughs> huh? she didn't even know what to say to me in that moment. She was like, yeah. it was so far. Cause Heather's like this embodied yeah. being like yeah. she is embodied. Yeah. Like she's yeah. walking sexualness, like just, yeah. um, and so I, so like, you know, two years later and like, oh, I get why that would be really fucking weird in her world. Like that just is like, Greek. I was speaking Greek to her right then, but that was my reality. And, um, and I talked yeah. to a lot of people that are like that, like they don't. So, so it's interesting now that we're talking about these energies that I have always been aware of in my body. I wonder how much I separated the energies that I do know from what I thought I should be perceiving that aren't actually different. So that might even be something else of like, what energies do you perceive with your body? And are they different? Is there actually an actual difference of those or something else? And, you know, like, it's like everywhere we've cut ourselves off from what it is we do perceive with our bodies. That's an interesting thing to look at too. Well, that's been the gift of like my journey with addiction and my journey with alcoholism and food addiction was Mm -hmm. that, and for, for all of my new points of view about it, I will say that I have so much gratitude for 
how much pain I caused myself. I mean, I was trying to kill myself for the majority of my life with binge eating and alcohol and drugs. So not having those things for years, I was like on a, you know, I didn't drink for 15 years and I didn't eat, like I ate like green beans and chicken for a lot of years too, because I was like, I was going to fucking solve that fucking problem. Yeah. And, and what I got out of that was a lot of years in a row where I had no buffers between me and me in my yeah. body. Yeah. And it forced me to get, I don't, I, it is not my MO to go into my body and be comfortable here. It's like, I would rather be almost anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I really would fucking would. Does anybody I, else could, want to be in here? This is like, this is kind of a drag. <laughs> yeah. But I was kind of forced to, or I chose to be forced to, or however you want to fucking frame it. Mm. And like, I, I, it's so weird how life works because I, mm. now that I'm coming at the embodiment from choice, which is what the tools of access are giving me, as opposed to from you have to because that's what the 12-step people say you have to do, I'm realizing a lot of what the 12-step people said was exactly right on. They were just coming at me from you have to do this because that's healthy. And I was like, well, fuck you. I'm not going to do what anybody tells me I have to fucking do. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, oh, wait, I actually don't like what espresso is doing to my body. Like, it feels bad. It doesn't feel good. Am I going to choose that? Mm -hmm. My body is being very clear with me about it. And I'm still like, but I like to drink it. And it's like, they knew what they were talking about. They were, I just couldn't hear it because I was so not willing to be made wrong anymore for any choices. Yeah. It's like, what if it isn't wrong anymore? What if it's just a question of, does it contribute? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's embodiment. Everything. That's yeah. You could just apply that to everything. You could apply that to this whole entire conversation about religion or God or food or what if it isn't about anything that's right or wrong, but just like, does it contribute? And that's what I was looking at with bringing worship music back into my life and these energies back into my life. I'm like, dude, these energies get me more present quicker than anything I've ever done. And I throw on worship music and I am being in that second like i'm being all of me my potency my the gratitude the vulnerability that the best me there is right like meaning like mm. the, the all of me and i'm present mm. in like 30 seconds and i was like mm. and i would eliminate this from my life for what reason right right and that's just what i that's what i want to invite back into the world just like yeah you know the the baby with the bathwater throwers of like going hey yeah. dude like, you know, nope. something. don't, yeah. What did you know? Bring it back. Yeah. And maybe it's not bring it back. Maybe it's just like, what were you aware of and what can you, well, for those of us who threw it out, bring it back. There's the bringing back. And for, and I think there's a lot of people out there who, who haven't, I mean, Blossom says it really well. She's like, yeah, I, I have the awareness that there's a lot of secret closeted Christians in access and they're just not like raising their hand in class. And she's like, I'm ready to talk to them. And Gary says, now's the time to talk to them. And I'm like, go you people who were able to not disempower yourselves in that way. Like, I thank you for being who you guys have been being. I have been like, how do you be being that? <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, cool. I'm on board. Like I'm open. Let's all of it is one thing. Everything is everything. Yeah. Cool. How does it get better than this? That's it. Yeah. Well, thank you for this conversation. <laughs> thank well. you so much. Yeah. Mm. Thank you guys watching, whoever you are. Like <laughs> if there's anything we can contribute, comment and we will engage. And we are so open to having this conversation and wonder yeah. where it will go now. I, I take it you recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> did you? I did. Oh, thank goodness. Because I just realized I didn't, we didn't even have that conversation. <laughs> Yay. <have> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I love you and I love all you guys listening and we'll look forward to talking more. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye.